the, the lifestyle I was living, you know, I grew up around it. So, you know, I really was like a product of that shit. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. You know what I'm saying? We ain't had a millionaires that admire around us and shit. Nigga, look up to the dope man. You feel what I'm saying? Look up to them niggas that was having shit. Shout out to the humble soul. This Mojo checking in. West Orlando, man. Y'all fuck with it. A humble soul, we checking back in, man. Another exclusive, live from Orlando right now. Um, we got the money man in front of the camera. You know For what sure. I'm saying? Mojo, what's going on with you, bro? Shit, just cooling, man. You know, doing what I'm supposed to do. You know. Nah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, I normally see you on the side, you know what I'm saying, or your yeah. brother, D-Boy, but um, for sure. I guess this your first official interview. I didn't even know that, man, before yeah, we tapped in. Yeah, man, exclusive, exclusive. Humble Soul got it first, man. Real talk, real talk, sure. dog. So, um, born, born in Orlando, came up on the west side. Yeah, for sure. Um, take us back to the beginning, man. Like, what was a young mojo like? Um, just in that in that section of the city, bro. Like, were you a kid that was rebellious? Was you a good dude? Oh yeah, were you for in the sure. Video I was games, the sports. What like, what was it like for you coming up? I was a real knucklehead, you know, badass growing up. I, I had to touch the stove to know that it was hot. You feel what I'm saying? So, a lot of my childhood, I was just learning a lot of lessons and shit, you know. But I came up on the west side, you know, the best side. Like, that's where everything go on at. Like the Richmond Heights area, I done stayed all around, but you know, Richmond Heights, that's where I made my bones at, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Richmond Heights really made King Cole, you know? You said it, it's King, King, King. King Cole Boulevard. King Cole Boulevard. Yeah, so. in, 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 the, in the dead end, right there by the park, man. For the people tuning in who've never been, they've never been to Orlando, most definitely not the west side of Orlando, like, illustrate like what that atmosphere is like out there in that section of the city dog it's gutter you know everyone got gutters we got it's, it's, that's the gutter you know like the low income area where all the badass kids from you know you know you got some good ones and shit but for the most part you know it ain't no rich neighborhood you know what i'm saying yeah. it's more like you know homegrown like that mm. that real close-knit shit you know what i'm saying Real tight knit community and shit, but it's the West Side for sure. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, I guess in every different city, you got the pockets where it may be hood, but it's still like the neighborhoods or the sections with the decent homes, right? Like middle class. Was that the type of setup, or it was all like low low income in that? Setup? Yeah, you know, it wasn't the projects. It's a neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All the houses around there, they. There ain't no fucking mansions and no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like single family homes and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's like a real, you know, gutter type area. But you say, so you was a knucklehead, so no sports and nothing for you? Come yeah, I played up. football. I was good at football. I, um, that. What age did you start playing football? I started playing part one or when I was like eight, nine years old. I played for the Jaguars, South Central Jaguars. Uh, South Central Tigers. I played a little bit of high school and shit, but you know. What position? I played wide receiver and cornerback. I was snatching shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go get that motherfucker and I'm gonna make sure you don't get that motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, so you was on both sides, offense and defense. Yeah, for sure. Do you think you had the potential to go like D1 or go pro and all of that? I, I, had, a, I, you know, I had a future in that shit. Just, you know, some of my choices that I made growing up, it kind of hindered that. Like, it fucked up my pot of gold, you know what I'm saying? I brought a fucking cannon to school. I had a blick on me. I ended up getting expelled and all that football shit went out the window. You know what I'm saying? I got, I turned grown after I made that decision. This was in high school? Mm-hmm. Ninth grade, 10th grade. My 10th grade year, I brought a gun to school. Got end up one of my partners, you know what I'm saying? Got caught with my shit and we, you know, went in for the shit, but that's when football ended for me. When I was in the juvenile, in and out that motherfucker. Since then? Yeah, So since prior then. to that, no issues with nah, the law? Hell no. Nah. Yeah, yeah, you know, little shit, little run-ins and shit. 
do 21 days here, yeah, 21 days there, yeah, but you know, like, that was really one of my major cases. After that, everything was a fucking gun case or some shit like that. You know, I was living like that. Man, so can you take us back to that particular day? So, and just that time period of your life as a youngster. So you in high school, you said 10th grade. Yeah, 10th grade. What What's going on at that point in your life that would cause you to bring a gun to school or your homeboy had your gun? I was just rebellious, man. I had some shit going on at school. You know, I used to fight a lot and shit. You know, I got into it with a, a, a bunch of niggas. You know what I'm saying? And that just was my everyday part of my outfit. I, they ain't know I had it, but I, I always had that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I always had it. It just, the, the events that occurred that day, I got in a fight with a nigga and shit. You know what I'm saying? At the bus stop, man. Like the next day, we come back, we on the same shit, but I had my shit on me. I end up doing what I did, you know what I'm saying? And we get on the bus, the nigga go to screaming, oh, he got a gun, he got a gun. And ain't nobody really listened to it, but we got to the school. First, second, third period, everything good, you know? Finna go to lunch. They put the school on lockdown and shit, you feel me? So I'm like, damn, I wonder why the school on lockdown. I try to go out the room, the portable, I'm in the portable. I try to go out the portable, use the bathroom. When I come out the portable, the SWAT team coming from both ways. Like, they like, you who we looking for? Like, come on, let me holler at you. End up going down for that shit. Damn, so the dude you got to fight with, y'all fought multiple times. Well, you say you fought different dudes, but he yeah. ended up telling on you. Nah, he ain't tell on me. You know, people seen it. You, you said he was on the bus telling. Oh, he was just telling a different, different yeah, story like kids. People were seeing it, oh, you know okay, what I'm saying? Okay, so it was, you know, okay. it was known that I had that motherfucker, you feel me? Yeah. yeah, but, you know, they got involved. That shit ended up going the wrong way. But and you went to juvenile for how long? I think that time. They had like 21 days, but they staffed me for a juvenile program. That like juvenile prison type shit, you feel me? After the staffing, I bought that bitch. I ran away, you know what I'm saying? Like, my mama couldn't find me, nobody couldn't find me. I was in the hood though, you know? And shit, it just went on from there. Hold on, you escaped? Nah, I ain't escape. I just absconded that bitch. I ain't go to that motherfucker, you know? Oh, okay, so you never went, went mm -hmm. in after that, okay. I don't know how everything worked, man, like juvenile versus jail and prison, so. Yeah, you know, juvenile, they kind of lenient on you, you know what I'm saying? They'll get you, staff you for the program, you be waiting on the bed, you wait on the bed at home, like you free waiting on that motherfucker, mm. you know what I'm saying? So when your mom gets the news that you get expelled, how does she respond? Just another occurrence. I stayed in trouble in school. You know, she oh, stayed on my ass. But yeah, she was disappointed. She definitely was disappointed. Were they rooting for you, man, to go? Like, for the football like, shit? Yeah, go to college and all of that? I, I, you know, I'm assuming that's everybody mama dream, you know? They want them to make it out of this shit. Mm. But yeah, of course. My mama was a good support system when it came to football and all that shit, so. Yeah. Yeah. Man, let's, let's, let's take a step back. So <clears throat> I know I jumped into like, like what you were like as a kid, but as far as like, you mentioned your mom, but can you just talk about your household as a whole and your father and siblings and all of that, dog? Uh, it was me, my brother, and my little sister. You know, my mom was a single parent. We had my stepdad and shit. But, you know, my daddy stayed here. We stayed there. He was very active in our life. You know, he was always there. So it was like we had two houses. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we over here. Sometimes we over there. But for the most part, we went to school from my mama's house and shit. You know, my daddy would come take us to school, pick us up. Mm. For on the weekends, and, you know what I'm saying? We might be over that bitch five, six, seven days at a time. It's just where we want it to be, you know? Yeah. Man, like, coming up in an area that's impoverished, I guess to say, you know, in so many words. Right. Were, were y'all struggling coming up, or were y'all the fresh kids, man? I mean, we had everything we needed. You know, we wasn't no bad doing that motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? We had everything we needed. We had extra when my daddy was here, you know, but when he passed, we still had everything. Mm. We ain't go without shit, so, you know what I'm saying? I could say I had a 
pretty decent child. I stayed fresh for the most part. Yeah, yeah. And the reason I'm asking you that is because, so what would cause you to really rebel? And I just wanted to do shit my way. I mean, but where did where did that like what placed that inside of you? If you got you got both parents in your life and a stepfather. Now, after my daddy died, it really like took a toll on me. That's when I really yeah break it down. Went, went in savage mode. You know what I'm saying? So your father passed away. How old were you? I think I was seven, seven, eight, some shit like that. But yeah, he had his hand on me. I used to get my ass whooped all the time. Like he kept me in line and shit. Yeah, you know when once that. Lee, you know, we had a stepdaddy, but I wasn't really trying to hear that shit. I took my own route. Like, I wanted to do it my way. You feel me? Like, they might tell me to go right. I'm going to go left just to see what's down that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? That's that really how I roll. I, I got to see it to believe it. You know what I'm saying? Did that cause show you? me. Did that cause you? I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You said you got to show you. Yeah, they got I had to learn. I had to see it. You know what I'm saying? You could tell me that motherfucker hot. I'm gonna touch it and see. That's so how I was. It wasn't nobody like no big homies and no OGs and nothing that kind of tried to steer you the right way? Shit, my OGs, big homies, the niggas from the hood, they was doing the shit that I really was looking up to. Like, I admired that shit though. The money, the cars, the jewelry, you know what I'm saying? They had all the women. So that's what I wanted to do, you feel me? Yeah. So what about like academically, before everything went left? I had good grades, ain't no doubt. Like what type of student were you? Aside from being rebellious, like actually- I was a good rebellion. student. I, I used to go do my work, then cut up. What schools did you go to in Orlando? Um, shit, I went to Catalina Elementary. I went to a whole lot of elementary schools, Palmetto, Tangelo, a couple more, you know what I'm saying? Middle school, I went to Memorial. And I went to MSPA, that's like a alternative school, Excel, for the bad kids and shit. Mm. I went there for a couple of years. High school, Jones. Uh, we stayed on the east side for a while, so I went to Colonia. And I went to Dr. Phillips, too. Right. So people from Orlando, they going to be familiar with these high schools that mm -hmm. you're saying, these schools yeah, you're saying? Yeah, for sure, for sure. What, what caused you to go to so many different elementary schools? Were y'all moving around a lot? Yeah, we just moved, you know. You weren't getting kicked out at all? No, I wasn't getting age, kicked. Yeah. I wasn't getting kicked out. Oh, Hell no. Nah. Not at elementary school. Hell no. Nah. Mm. No, nah. mm. nah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, one more question about the sports, man. So you said you was a cornerback and a wide receiver. Yeah, for sure. Did you break any records when you were playing? I don't know record breaker. I was good, though. Mm. I don't, shit, I wasn't trying to break no records. I was just playing football. No. No. Not I was sure. great at my position, though. So, man, I mean, let's, let's, let's dive a little deeper into it. So, your father passes away. That kind of opens the door for you to really, I guess, jump off the porch, quote unquote. But you still in school. Then the situation right. happened with the gun. So, prior to that, like, do you remember the first, around the first age, you really started, like, getting out there, toting pistols and all of that? Was it, it was before 10th grade? Yeah, yeah. Probably like 14, 13, like 13, 14. I had a pistol, for sure. And if you in an area where you know people, man, you got, you know what I'm saying, siblings, I guess you got friends, so I would assume you're not necessarily in danger. You doing this by choice. Yeah, it was, it was always, you know what I'm saying, by choice. Or are you doing something you ride? The lifestyle, doing the, the lifestyle I was living, you know, mm -hmm. I grew up around it. So, you know, I really was like a product of that shit. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. You know what I'm saying? We ain't had a millionaires that admire around us and shit. Nigga looked up to the dope man. You feel what I'm saying? Looked up to them niggas that was having shit. So, you know, that's kind of like what, what route I took. I did it a little different, but yeah, I, I took their route though. So you started hustling young too? Yeah, for sure. Around for what sure. age you talk of? Probably like same age, like 13, 14. So when you start carrying a gun, you start selling with I was I was um, selling weed and shit before that though. Yeah, yeah, I was selling weed and shit before. I probably like twelve when I got my first weed bone. 
I fucked it up, but you know, I was a young nigga with that shit. Yeah, yeah. So what went uh, what went wrong? No, just I ain't know how to save the money at first. If you get the money, blow the money. Couldn't re up. I had to go steal a nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I kept it going at my pace, the best I could. But you know, once I got older, I really like learn how to focus. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So okay, did, but did it transition from? Uh, did it get more serious from the, from the weed to? You know, like yeah, it was yeah yeah. The weed was just the first step. You know. I went from the weed hole, niggas was selling other shit, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, the weed was the first step, for sure. Man, um, we ain't gotta go too much into it, but I do wanna ask you this, man, like being someone who checked out some of your music and hearing the content, you know, it's real, like, like raw. Right. It's real street, um, like unapologetically, like, I mean, I guess you could say like Savage to a certain extent. Right. Before you started rapping, like who were you listening to to kind of influence that that style? Aside from you just living the way you was living. Uh, Juvenile, C Murder, uh, Soldier Slim, Master P, Eight Ball, and MJG, you know, that type of shit. All them old school, you know, them type of niggas. Not for sure. Nobody in Florida though. Florida really ain't, you know, they ain't really had. When I was growing up, it was a couple of rappers from Florida and shit, but that was like in the later years, like, you know, uh, Granddaddy South and shit like that. From Orlando? Yeah. Okay. But not no Trick Daddy. Yeah, Trick Daddy for sure. My bad. I, yeah, I, I definitely listen to Trick Daddy. Yeah, we said Juvenile, C Murder. For sure. A Ball, MJG. Yeah. All southern, so he was a southern. You ain't never venture out to the West Coast music, the East Coast music, nothing like that. Oh, I listened to my brother was a big pop fan, so you know I listened to pop and shit, uh, Mac Ten, them type of niggas. You know what I'm saying? But that really wasn't my thing. I was on that down south shit. You know? Still like gangster rap though. Yeah, gangster rap for sure. So you never was into the like the lyrical. It's like, well, I mean, they lyrical to a certain extent. I, yeah. I guess you, it's I was into the reality rap, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I feel, you. I feel you. I was listening to the niggas who I, I can look at and feel like they living that shit that they rapping about, you know what I'm saying? All them punchlines and metaphors and shit ain't never really you know, mean too much to me. I wasn't into that. Yeah. yeah. Man, coming up as the brother of, of somebody who, who you know, a well, well-known Orlando rapper who was doing it young, did that influence you or inspire you to start rapping or did you kind of do that on your own? Yeah, for sure, it was a big influence. That nigga really made, made me take it serious, you know what I'm saying? Hey look bro, shit going on right now, you need to do this. This is what we doing, so that's what we was doing, you know what I'm saying? No, for sure. Around what age did you first start like writing raps? Writing raps. If you can remember. Probably like 17, 16. Start writing them down. I used to freestyle all the time. But writing them, trying to, you know what I'm saying, put them bitches together, probably like 17, 16. And I still ain't knew what bars was until my brother told me how to count them bitches. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I used to always write shit like, you know, being locked up on that juvenile shit, you couldn't do nothing but I hid and write it. You know what I'm saying? Write that shit down, write down what I'm going through. Kind of like a poem, but it really on some rap shit. Was that like a sense of therapy for you? Yeah, yeah. It kind of put you on It was a release, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I'm finna write this shit, this how I'm feeling. And it ended up being, you know, melodic type shit. So it came together with rapping, like the music, the beats and shit. It all made sense. So take us, so so you said 16, 17, this is after you've been expelled. Yeah, 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 I wasn't in school when I started writing rap. So you weren't battling and nobody rapping at the lunchroom table or nothing? No, I ain't never did the lunchroom table shit. You know, we used to do it at the spot and shit at my people house. We'll turn the motherfucking radio on on Good Friday and bro had the instrumentals and we'll be in that bitch just rapping, you know what I'm saying? 
we never really thought about taking it serious until the opportunity presented itself. You feel me? Do you remember your first actual like studio session? My first studio session, yeah, yeah. I what was know. that? What was that experience like for you? I mean, that was different. It was different. Like you had to go in that bitch and actually say this shit. You know, I had stage fright on the mics and shit at first, but once I got it together, and then my cousin had a laptop. We used to rap into the the microphone on the headphones yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah. It was some fucking program we used to use, but we were able to put that shit on wax and hit. You know what I'm saying? What was the first song you recorded? The first song I recorded. I don't remember the name of that bitch, but I remember I recorded that bitch. It was me and my homeboy, uh, one of my dogs from back in the day. Uh -huh. And we just was rapping and shit. And mm -hmm. this is all, like you said, you were a fan of reality rappers, so everything yeah, you sure. was putting in your music was what you was living, what you was it, going Either through. I was living it, I done so, seen it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or I was finna do that shit. Like, that's how I put my shit together to this day. Man, um, speaking a little bit more about the music, you've been around from the beginning, so you done saw the evolution from, like you said, I ain't so. I guess at first it's the, the red team, right? Then it transitioned to, uh, I guess, what is it, Mo, uh, uh, Mohawk Mayhem, Mo, Mohawk Mayhem, then 1090 Black Boys, etc. Yeah, for sure. For Do you sure. feel like y'all um, were responsible for carving a lane that a lot of artists followed? After the fact, do you feel like y'all were trendsetters, man? Just looking back on it now? Yeah, for sure. We we, we brought the wave. We brought the wave. Because niggas weren't really... There weren't no young niggas doing it when we started doing it. You know what I'm saying? And then after we laid the, the, the foundation for that shit, you had a lot of rappers coming. You know what I'm saying? Niggas rapping and shit. But yeah, I feel like you know, we brought the wave on that shit for our era. Our era of young niggas. We kind of like cut the car the path out for that shit. So who, for the people who, who are not familiar, like break down the original, the real deal original members. Like when y'all first had the red team, who all was involved? Uh, red team, it was me, my nigga Baby Boy, of course my brother D-Boy, uh, my cousin Diggy, and Keezy. Keezy, that's like a big brother type, you know what I'm saying? He was like the big brother figure and shit. Oh, for sure. And so when y'all first come together and put the music, y'all start recording, does it instantly take off or do y'all receive like a certain type of resistance from the people around y'all? Oh, no, we ain't getting no resistance. It wasn't no resistance. You know Sometimes it can take time for somebody yeah, to take it, off. Yeah, it, it, it ain't take too much time because I think after our first take, maybe two, three weeks after that, we were getting booked. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't take too much of time. And y'all start seeing actual, like, real money. Yeah, we, we got some money out that shit. But what, what, was it to the point where you still, did you still have, like, one foot? It was always one foot in, one Boy, foot out. Yeah, 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 for me. You know? I could say probably for all of us, you know what I'm saying? Because at that time, that's just what we was doing. You know? The rapping was like an escape from that shit. You know what I'm saying? All right, we finna leave here and go to the studio. We might be in the studio four, six, eight hours, and you coming right back to this shit. So it's always one for them, one for that. Man, what what is that like for you mentally, going from somebody who's just solely a, a hustler, all of that, to being an actual artist that people recognize you now? So you got a different type of attention on you why you still try to balance that with, you know, doing something illegal? It was, shit. It was, it was a, a transition. Definitely it was a transition, you know. Um, from a day to day, you know, the shit was still kind of like the same. It was like a, a culture shock for me, you know, like, damn, we really doing this shit. And, and we, we getting recognized for doing this shit, you know what I'm saying? And it makes sense to do this shit, so. It's what we doing, you know what I'm saying? 
But yeah, it was like a, a real culture shock for a nigga. Like, and we really got fans. Like, these people listen to us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we influencing trends out this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, we setting the tone out this motherfucker. So, yeah, it was a transition. Definitely, it was a transition. What's like one of the, you got a crazy memory, like you being at the grocery store or being at church or somewhere, I don't know, it's just somebody approaching you just randomly? Oh uh, yeah, most deaf, like, most deaf. We used it's to go to other cities, know. like, Daytona's and D-Land, niggas just be out, period, and, oh, you, you mojo, like, hell yeah, type shit, you know what I'm saying? But it was always a joy just to hear, like, damn, these folks know who I'm is. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just no Orlando nigga. Like, this shit spread not. You feel what I'm saying? But yeah, for sure. Like, I got that, like, that fuck it. We, we there type feeling. You know what I'm saying? When a motherfucker recognize you and don't know you from nothing but the music. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Man, you, so you named, so it was like, it was. It's five, it was five years. Yeah, it was five. Right. So if you can break it down, if you talking like basketball or something like that, like what role or what position do you feel like you played on the squad, dog? Shit, I played in the position I was needed for, you know what I'm saying? But you know, definitely like um, bro had to run, you know, bro ran point, so probably shooting guard or some shit like that. The power four. Some shit like that. Yeah. Took a brief intermission, man. So coming back, so you coming from the west side of Orlando. Right. It's multiple artists that are came out of that section. Like coming up, were you inspired by it, by anybody aside from um, your brother? You know, on that section of the city, because it's, it's different names that come to mind to represent west side, the west side of Orlando when it comes to rap. Yeah, inspiration wise, I think like. No, a nigga was inspired by my brother, really. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, you know, that's the nigga who really taught me that shit. So, that's where it come from. I can't really say nobody else inspired me. Oh, okay. No, for sure, for sure. Because I'm thinking, like, um, on the west side, it's different. Like, like, so, like, the Moot Boys, the Armstrongs, the Flay Rock. Shit, they was rapping, but them niggas ain't inspired me. I was inspired by what was rat next to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did y'all have any, um, so it's not all the same hood though. So, cause West Orlando is big, so it's multiple hoods it's, on that side of the city. Yeah, yeah, we, we, you know, the same neighborhood, but we're a generation under them niggas. You know oh yeah, they are a little older too. Yeah. No, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, man, you, you are responsible for recording a song, I guess, that kind of led to some tension. You know, mm. definition of a, of, a, of a mohawk, you know. Like, what, what inspires you to record that, dog? Just the chain of events that was going on in my section. You know, some shit went on. I just felt that was the best way to express myself, you feel me? And for somebody who's never heard the song though, like like me personally, like like connecting with you like off camera, um, discussing a, a couple of different things, you know, I got a certain point of view, but for the viewers who tuning in, can you let them know like what so what was going on around that point in time that you that you comfortable with sharing, you know what I'm saying? She is, you know. Um, well, you know, one of my partners ended up going up through there, you know. Had to take a ride. And that's how I expressed it. Yeah. I know you said, and, and the partner that you, you mentioned on the song is, is uh, Shaw. Yeah, my brother. Around what age did you, you, you connect with him or meet him? I think me and Shaw met, it was like, Maybe like 13, 14. We played on the same football team. So I knew Shaw for a while. Like, we like brothers, for real. You know what I'm saying? Y'all played on the same football team? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because that's a name I done heard. I heard him talking on, on the beginning of different songs with, with Armstrong, et cetera. But I ain't know like he was actually into sports. I hear like the street oriented stuff. 
Oh, no, nah, he played football for sure. Played soccer too, that motherfucker. He played sport. For sure, he played sport. He ain't played the motherfucker long, but, you know, he played him. Yeah. Yeah. And you said, did you still keep in contact with him uh, nowadays? Talk to him every day. Down there every day, for and sure. And he, he's locked up for, for how, like, what does he got right now? He's got a 60. Like 60 years, 58, 60 years, some shit like that. And you say you talk to him every day? Every day. And when you, you, you talk to somebody who has 60 years in prison, I can imagine like how you feeling, or I can, like I said, imagine or assume what you thinking on the outside, being a free person, but like listening to his voice, like how does he sound when you speak to him every day? Does his spirit sound down? Oh yeah, his, nah, his spirit's up. He's still lively. Chicken talking, same shit, you know? He ain't, that shit ain't beating him up. Like. He's still high spirit, you know what I'm saying? Nigga with some hope, like, he know they're gonna open the gate for him. Like, he don't talk down on this situation. He really got, like, good spirits about everything. Fuck the predicament he in, he got, like, the best spirits you can have, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just took a brief intermission, man, getting back to it. I was asking you about um, YG Shaw, asked you about um, recording that song, uh, when you mentioned his name, like after you released that song, what type of response did you get? I mean, it was, you know, it was a good response. That was part of what we was doing. Like, that was part of the conglomerate, the Mohawk Mayhem shit. You feel me? But after that, we turned another page, you feel what I'm saying? Like, went straight into the block boy shit. We lit our shit up, you know what I'm saying? We went up another level, we bossed up. On these niggas, you know what I'm saying? And shit went to, from from shit to sugar for us. In in a, in a sense, you know what I'm saying? So you noticing, like I mentioned earlier, you was there from the beginning. So, what is the evolution? Okay, from 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 the Red Team to Mohawk Mayhem to the to the 1090 Block Boys, like. We had the same. If you can chronicle like the changes, you say it went from shit to sugar. Like yeah, we had said. we had the same bravado, but you know, the style got different. The jewels got different. We had whips. You know what I'm saying? We had more access to shit that we could never touch. You know what I'm saying? We had a, a, you know, that shit changed. Like we went from being here every day to being everywhere. You know what I'm saying? And shit like the lifestyle. The whole lifestyle changed because we ain't really have to be, you know what I'm saying? Want for nothing, need for nothing. We we turned our shit up. Yeah. And no, no backlash. Nah, we ain't getting no backlash. Hell nah. The folks embraced us. We some charismatic figures, you know what I'm saying? They they fought with us. Yeah. Real tough. Um, you in particular, man, like you gotta, I don't know what color, what color your, your eyes are, man. You're, you look different. You don't look just, just like, I mean, you can tell y'all brothers, but you got yeah. a different type of uh, appearance to a certain extent. What color are your eyes, bro? Uh, I can't see these bitches. I don't what, know what you feel what I'm saying. You look like you, uh, I don't know, man, this is unique, man. Like you from New Orleans or something, dog. Then yeah. you got the gold grill. Like what, around what age did you first start uh, putting goals in your mouth? Oh shit, this this these, these perms right here, but it started with the with, nigga, we used to go to Paul and in the Magic Mall and drop them bitches. I've been on this shit, you know what I'm saying? They like that that dirty south, you know that you know a nigga from the south type shit. That's really who rocking that shit. But all the niggas I looked up to had a mouth full of these bitches. So I just knew bitch, I'm finna do that. That's what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? These trophies for us, like. You in the hood, you got your wall and trophies, you know what I'm saying? You somebody who did something, getting some money, you feel what I'm saying? You said, uh, so what is a wall for people who don't know? A wall is top to bottom, gate to gate. You don't see no white, that's a wall, you feel me? You had that at one point in time, like every every two? Yeah, they, when I was young there, they were pull outs, but you know, I ain't feel I needed all that shit. I just did it because that was what we were, you know what I'm saying? That's what we were doing.
So you say you've been rocking grill since a young. So around yeah. what age you think you got your first grill? Shit, I made my mama buy me a grill for Christmas. I was motherfucking <laughs> probably like 13. And she used to hide them bitches from me. She didn't want me wearing them to school or none of that shit. I used to have to try to sneak them bitches out to wear them to school, but yeah, we've been doing that gold grill shit. Before. Yeah. Can you uh can you show them real quick? You said so which you said those permanents right there. Yeah, these permanents right here. Yeah, what carry? What carry? 22k. 22k. Mhm. Mm Man, can you talk about your tattoos too? Oh what yeah, this this shit right here, you know, I had a homeboy that was a tattoo artist and he just used to be like, "Hey, bro, come to the you know what I'm saying? Let me wet you up. So what you got? Like so, all of these got special meanings to you. Like, would you, can you talk yeah, about someone? A lot of them. I mean, still my homeboy Marlo right here. He passed. You know what I'm saying? This the red team shit and all that. You know, just a, you know, some shit writing on the wall. Sure. We're talking about man. So um, you personally, man, you, you released a, a song recently. I guess you've been teasing like you're gonna put out uh, a project. But right. prior, prior to this, you, you dropped like visuals and singles and collaborated, but yeah. you really haven't been super, I guess, consistent on the solo tip. Why is that? Well, I, I, I had a solo project when we were doing that Block Boy. Uh, we had the Block Boy handle. I had a solo project called Private Party and shit, but you know, I really like just being road running, man. I really sat down and say, fuck it, I'm going to get the people what they want because every time I see somebody, like, why you ain't rapping, bro? When the project drop, woo, woo, woo. So, fuck it, I'm going to get it to them. But yeah, I always collaborated with my brother. You know, he kept me in the studio. I got collabs with other niggas and shit, too. But well, they collab with me and shit, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, for sure. And what's the definition of a road runner, man? There's somebody always on the go, moving around. You don't sit. Not since there. I hate since there. Are you a traveler too? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get up and go. Hey, whatever is calling me, I'm coming. You feel me? Yeah, for shit, sure. What's some of your favorite uh, spots to visit? Well, I like the A. I fought with Atlanta real tough. You know, I'm catch. Couple Cali vibes, like I've been to Texas and New York, shit like that. I don't know. But Atlanta, like, one of my favorite spots. You've been out the country too, huh? Yeah, yeah, I just got back. You say you just got back? Mm -hmm. You be a modest about it, man. So you <laughs> you crossing times on, crossing oceans and all that. Where did you go? Were you just coming back from? I just came back from the islands. I was in the uh, Virgin Islands and shit. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. It, first time going out the country or not? You been out the country prior to that? No, nah, that was my first time going out What was country. that like for you, man? It was a vibe. It was a vibe. That blue water, good food, the best hotel, you know what I'm saying? Just a vibe. Let my hair out a little bit. <laughs> you do any writing or anything while you was down there? No, nah, I was just... Sightseeing, catching the scenes, you know, enjoying the water, enjoying the food, the festivities and shit in the islands, you know. Real vacation type shit, ain't you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was on in tourist mode. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. Because I know I've heard some artists say they travel to different spots to kind of get a certain vibe or a certain little feel mentally, put right. in a certain zone. When they now, I really was like a brain break for me. You know, went over there and just cleared my thoughts, came back with a clear head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, what zone you in right now, um, as far as, like, when it comes musically? Like, what can people expect from your upcoming project, dog? Oh, my shit hard. Like, I got some real, you know, my lane, like, that street shit, you know what I'm saying? Reality, like, what the young niggas doing, what's going on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what was current times and shit, current events. You know what I'm saying? The algorithm of the streets and shit, that's really what I be rapping about. For sure. Orlando got a, 
it's had a popping rap scene more and more. You mentioned like coming up, it wasn't too many people out there for you to be influenced by, but more yeah. so recently, you know, it's been a, just an influx of different artists popping up, you know, seeing them going crazy on social media, so on and so forth. Who you rocking with right now in your city, dog? Like who you listen to? Um, from the O. Um, of course, D Boy. Um, I listen to Seven Thirty Turk. Um, a lot of the young niggas. You know, a lot of the young niggas. It's a lot of um, too many to name, but. I really be listening to what's to come, you know what I'm saying? I like that younger generation. But for the most part, yeah, like, ah, shit, that's what I be listening to. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple of Daytona artists I listen to. Just really niggas that be on the shit we on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Anybody you want to collaborate with from Orlando that you haven't tapped in? Would you do something like the well, I guess, a, I don't know, I ask you, I'm going to speak for you. You know, I'm open to it. Whatever, however it go, you know, I'm open to it. I feel that. Man, who would you say or if you could put like a, I, don't, I know it's kind of generic to say a top five, but when it comes to Florida, there's so many different rappers out the state from Central Florida to Southern Florida, North Florida, you know what I mean? Like, who would you put? Like, who's the who's who in your list, dog? Like, who you really rocking with? Just overall, not even just right now, but overall. You talking about the music? Or, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, top five. I fuck with a lot of niggas grind, you feel what I'm saying? How they move around, but top five, you have shit. It's kind of, um, bro, deep boy, I say, uh, Golden, I like how Golden grind. Uh, Said Golden. Golden boy. Golden boy. I got Golden boy grind. Uh, shit. Mm, that kind of hard. Say D boy Golden. Me. I don't know, I don't really listen to too many of these niggas, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, my yeah. top five kind of. No, I'm just saying like overall. You plies, got, Plies, he yeah, did his yeah, thing, yeah. I fuck with Plies. Yeah, I put Ross Plies in there, there. Yeah. I put Ross in there. Mm. My trick, you know what I'm saying? That's about it though. Is it, uh, let me ask you this man, is it a pride thing when it comes to, to Florida artists where they don't really want to recognize or so Oh, no, nah, I recognize niggas, you know. You can't take nothing from a nigga if he doing it. If, you know what I'm saying? Your grind speak for itself. But I ain't no pride for nigga. I ain't got no pride. I'm going to give you your flowers if your flowers are supposed to be given. You feel what I'm saying? I always been like that. Oh, for sure. It's just, so I guess it, when I was asked you about the collaboration thing, it just really ain't too many. You said I mean, you're open to it. I'm yeah, open to yeah. it. But there ain't no. nobody on your laundry list, on your list, like, okay. No, nah, yeah. not really, because I work with anybody who want to work with me. You know what I'm saying? No, for sure. For sure. Um, man, I was about to, uh, I was about to ask you something, dog. Right when, oh, this is what I want to ask you. I, I've had an opportunity to speak to a handful of Orlando artists, and a consistent theme is, the city would be a lot bigger musically if there was more like unity. Um, you being around for years now within the rap game, you know what I'm saying? From, you know, playing the backseat, also being in, in the game, you know right. what I mean? Like, what's your thoughts on just the unity in Orlando when it comes to the rap scene? I mean, certain niggas unify. It could be better though. I feel like it could be better. But you gotta get the right set of niggas to come together. You know, this shit really like, from what I see, it'd be like a crab in the bucket mentality. A nigga, I see you going up and try to hang on to you, pull you down, or whatever. But, you know, that's just Orlando. You know, everybody don't fuck with everybody. So, I can't really say. That everybody can unify, but you know that'd be a beautiful thing if it ever did happen. Well, and for y'all to receive like support when y'all first 
came in the game compared right. to now? Was it different back then or was it still like everybody was doing their own thing? Was it, yeah, it, it was back then, you had to be out there. You know what I'm saying? You had to be active. You had to be in the streets. You had to posters and CDs and shit. You know what I'm saying? Now it's just the internet. You can upload different. your shit and yeah. if they fuck with it, they fuck with it. They don't, they don't like the grind different. You know what I'm saying? We was really beating our feet, niggas. Beating the keyboards and shit now, so got to kind of like adjust to what's going on. Hmm. But it ain't hard, though. Man, you being somebody who's just just speaking to you, you don't being open about like the pistols at an early age, juvenile. I don't know how deep it got for you as far as like incarceration, but losing your father, you know, the hustling. Right. Um, I would imagine you develop like thick skin. To oh, not let you gotta have a lot this. of stuff bother you easily. But I'm curious to know, bro, like in a day where it's more digital and you can post a song or post a picture and it's the opportunity for anybody to leave a negative comment. Does that type of stuff, do you ever find yourself bothered by that or do, do you care what people think about you? What's your yeah, mind? No. Nah. Everybody entitled to opinion, they like assholes. I don't give a fuck about that. You know what I'm saying? Think what you want to think. I know what's up with me. You know what I'm saying? They know what's up with me. I don't care about no opinions, no comments and shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. Uh, for sure. Man, well, you mentioned that. You said you in tune with the algorithm. Like, you spitting a lot of the... You speaking for the streets in so many words. But right. for the youngsters, man, that's going to tune in and watch this, that may be on a certain path, if you can help them avoid bumping their head or just any game you can drop for the viewers, dog, like what's some words of wisdom you would give? Shit, learn from somebody else's mistakes. You ain't gotta bump your head and know that shit hurt. You know what I'm saying? You can look at what another nigga went through and choose not to do that, then do that. Ain't no points to prove out here. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta prove shit. All right? Stay away from that shit. That's 100, man. Well, uh, uh, Mojo, bro, I ain't gonna hold you up, man. I do, lastly, I wanna know, how did you get the name Mojo? Did, was that from, from a kid, or did you go by a different name? No, nah, I went by, they used to call me other shit, Red and this and that. Mohawk you know Red. Yeah. But Mojo came from, you no know, being sauced up. You know what I'm saying? Having flavor. You know what I'm saying? Like, staying fresh, like, you know what I'm saying? Got that mojo shit, got that, you know what I'm saying? And I just went with it. It stuck to me. So it's so around what age did you get that? You get, uh, They start calling me mojo like 18, 19. You say, so you say it comes from staying fresh though? Yeah. So you been off into the fashion for a long time? We always, I was always clean. I wasn't no dirty little nigga, you know what I'm saying? I stayed trendy, you know what I'm saying? Whatever was popping was on that shit. What you rocking nowadays? Some of your favorite brands? Uh, I fuck with bait a lot, you know what I'm saying? Um, motherfucking, a little bit of everything. I fuck with a little bit of everything, you know what I'm saying? 